Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our time of worship on this second Sunday in Advent. Behind me is our Chrismon tree. A lot of the symbols of who Jesus is and what he does for us are included on that tree. So if you have a chance, come up and take a good close look. Um, a group of our people did some work on that this year to uh, freshen up some of the uh, Chrismons on there and it's looking awesome. So let's begin our time of worship together with this prayer. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this Sunday is from the 11th chapter of Isaiah. A green shoot will sprout from Jesse's stump, from his roots a budding branch. The life-giving Spirit of God will hover over him, the Spirit that brings wisdom and understanding, the Spirit that gives direction and builds strength, the Spirit that instills knowledge and fear of God. Fear of God will be all his joy and delight. He won't judge by appearances, won't decide on the basis of hearsay. He'll judge the needy by what is right, render decisions on earth's poor with justice. His words will bring everyone to awed attention. A mere breath from his lips will topple the wicked. Each morning he'll put on sturdy work clothes and boots and build righteousness and faithfulness in the land. The wolf will romp with the lamb, the leopard sleep with the kid. Calf and lion will eat from the same trough, and a little child will tend them. Cow and bear will graze the same pasture. Their calves and cubs grow up together, and the lion eats straw like the ox. The nursing child will crawl over rattlesnake dens. The toddler stick his hand down the hole of a serpent. Neither animal nor human will hurt or kill on my holy mountain. The whole earth will be brimming with knowing God alive, a living knowledge of God ocean deep, ocean wide. On that day, Jesse's root will be raised high, posted as a rallying banner for the peoples. The nations will all come to him. His headquarters will be glorious. This ends our first reading. Our second lesson for this coming Sunday is from Romans chapter 15. That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waded right in and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled, is the way Scripture puts it. Even if it was written in Scripture long ago, you can be sure it's written for us. God wants the combination of his steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in Scripture to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. May our dependably steady and warmly personal God develop maturity in you so that you get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. Then we'll be a choir. Not our voices only, but our very lives, singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master, Jesus. So, reach out and welcome one another to God's glory. Jesus did it, now you do it. Jesus, staying true to God's purposes, reached out in a special way to the Jewish insiders so that the old ancestral promises would come true for them. As a result, the non-Jewish outsiders have been able to experience mercy and to show appreciation to God. Just think of all the scriptures that will come true in what we do. For instance, then I'll join outsiders in a hymn sing. I'll sing to your name. And this one, outsiders and insiders rejoice together. And again, People of all nations, celebrate God. All colors and races, give hearty praise. This ends our second lesson. Our gospel lesson is found in the third chapter of Matthew. 
While Jesus was living in the Galilean hills, John, called the baptizer, was preaching in the desert country of Judea. His message was simple and austere, like his desert surroundings. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. John and his message were authorized by Isaiah's prophecy, thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival, make the road smooth and straight. John dressed in a camel hair habit tied at the waist by a leather, leather strap. He lived on a diet of locusts and wild field honey. People poured out of Jerusalem, Judea, and the Jordanian countryside to hear and see him in action. There, at the Jordan River, those who came to confess their sins were baptized into a changed life. When John realized that a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for a baptismal experience because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded. Brood of snakes! What do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snakeskins is going to make any difference? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a descendant of Abraham is neither <clears throat> here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and blossoming? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand, will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false, he'll put out with the trash to be burned. The gospel of the Lord. Whoa, whoa. I'll tell you, some powerful stuff going on in that passage. And it's something that we all need to, to come to realize that you know, John the baptizer, he wasn't speaking just to the fat Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know, those that are going to give Jesus a lot of trouble down the road. Those who are probably giving him a lot of trouble already. Why are they give John trouble? It's because John is baptizing people. Jewish people. Jewish people didn't get baptized back in that day. No, Jewish people were already a part of God's people. They didn't need to be baptized. The only ones that would be baptized into the Jewish faith would be non-Jews. But here's John out there baptizing. It's probably because John is doing something very in tune with what the Essenes did. The Essenes were um, part of uh, the Jewish, the whole Jewish ranks. You had the Essenes, you had the Pharisees, you had the Sadducees. Essenes, they kind of kept to themselves. And it's thought that maybe John hung out with them a little bit. And they had little ritual washings for everything so that they would remain clean, so to speak, so that they would be pure before God and holy in their lives. So this was nothing new. John probably picked this up and said, hey, all of you, we've messed up so badly. We all have to be baptized. So get out there and do it. Hey, wait a minute, not you scribes, you Pharisees, you, you know, you, you guys, just get away, you bunch of snakes. <laughs> he knew what they were up to. So, um, wait a minute, it's not just them. He's talking to us as well. Yeah, he's talking to you and to me down through the ages. Are we serious when we come to John, when we come to the word of God that John proclaims, that the kingdom is near, repent, confess your sins and be baptized. Well, here's what you and I need to do. If you've been baptized, that's a good start. But did you know that baptism and repentance that goes right along with baptism 
That's a lifelong deal. It's not just a, a once shot in the dark. Now, I don't mean you go and get baptized all the time. Every Sunday, you go back to church and, oh, I've really messed up. I go get baptized again. No, that's not what it means. What it means is you need to repent. Continually turn your face toward God because we have this way of just kind of ignoring that and, and wandering off in the wrong direction. So repentance, it's a lifelong deal. And that's the way it's, it's spoken about in Scripture. All right. But we can't miss out on what else John has to say to you and to me. And it's what Advent is all about. Yeah, John is pointing toward the coming of one who is much greater than him. Yeah, Jesus, you and I know that because we have the benefit of looking back in history. But, but think about it. All the people saying, who are you talking about, John? Are you talking about the Messiah? John, are you Elijah, the prophet who was to come before the Messiah? They truly believe that. In fact, he's called Elijah by many people. All right, so think about that. John is saying you need to repent, every single one of you, every single one of us. And I'm telling you, the time is coming when there's someone who's going to do something a lot more to you. Um, how could I put this bluntly? Mm, he's going to clean you from the inside out. Yep, you think that colonoscopy you had at the doctor's office was uh, a, a raw deal? Hey, just wait till Jesus cleans you out from the inside out. Yeah, and on the outside too. You know what he's going to do there? He's going to put you on fire. He's going to burn you, baby. Yeah, he is. It's a baptism of wind that sweeps through the inside and of fire. Fire that, that purifies, that gets rid of all the crud in your life. And as painful as it might be at times, it's a beautiful thing. It puts you in a right relationship with God and in a right relationship with those around you. So get ready. He's coming. Make his path straight. He's on his way now to clean you up from the inside out. Let's take time now to join together in a word of prayer. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, inspired teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You embrace all who have died trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are re reunited with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, 
gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray that wonderful prayer that he first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Well, just revel in the glory of this chrismon tree that we have that points us into the direction of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King. Blessings be with you.